Welcome back, guys. Look what I found. It was free. It was by a dumpster. Can I fix it? Probably not. Alrighty, so I found this next to the garbage can. It's a Maytag. It's stainless steel on the inside. It's got a few little rust spots, but uh, overall, it looks decent. I'm gonna see if I can uh, flip this, get it working. I actually don't even know if it's broken, but I don't wanna plug it in or anything. The first thing I wanna do is take it apart and just take a look at it to see if I can physically see what's wrong with it. Uh, the first thing I noticed is when you look in here, everything looks fine. The first thing I did was twist this and then this moves. That's not normal. At least my washing machine doesn't do this. The whole, the whole thing spins. So maybe something's not connected down there. Maybe something broke. So I'm gonna take it apart. All right, so it looks like I'm making some progress here. There are two six and a half millimeters. I don't know what they are in standard, but you got two on both sides of those. Um, on the inside, they'll have this. So this is on the inside and this little thing is poking out. I just fish these out and put them on the ground. Don't really need those, but you've got two screws here. And once you get those screws, we have to, I think we have to take this off before we can take any of this stuff off because this is connected to this. It's not like my other one where you just hit a clip up here and the whole thing is easy. So this is where it gets a little difficult. There's two clips on the inside. Let's move this down. And you can see up here, you've got two clips on both sides. There's a little bit better light. This one, you've got a big plastic clip in the way, but behind it, there's a little metal clip back here. It's a little loop. You're gonna put your finger back there and you're gonna push it towards the rear of the machine. And you also have one up over here on this side, which you can see much better, just like that. Same thing, you're gonna push it towards the rear of the machine. All right, this is not easy for people with large hands. If you wanna push this forward to give yourself a little bit more room, you can do that. And once you find it, this one's a little bit more difficult like you saw. So I'm gonna push it forward. And then you're gonna lift up a little bit here. And that pops up on that side. Move this over. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Push it forward and lift up. And now you can see both sides and you're gonna come straight up and pivot at the back. And you can see underneath here, you can see underneath here, there's little hooks. You might be able to see it better from the side. There's little hooks that keep this in place. So make sure you don't come straight up. So that one's got a little hook. So we'll come forward a little bit and up. You can see all those hooks there on the bottom. Now we've got the whole top piece off. And this is the reason why we took the, uh, the, the two screws on the back side. We took this one off and we took this one off. So now that when we bring this up, it can come out. So if I need to get into anything here, now that that's off, um, I've really gone around and figured out that there is no way to take the top part off or the front part off like my uh, hot point. So it looks like the access is strictly here in the back. Uh, I watched some other videos trying to figure out how to get in here, but there are zero videos on this specific kind. Usually they have a latch over here where you can take the top off and take a look on the underside. But like I have the Continental Commercial Automatic Water Level. So apparently this one's put together different. So I'm gonna come back here. It looks like there's two more screws here on the bottom. I'm gonna take those out and I might have to take these other retaining clips for stuff on the inside, but I'm hoping I don't have to take a whole lot off. I don't see any more screws. There's another one right here. That one probably just keeps that on there, but let's, uh, let's figure out how this goes. And for some reason, these two down here are eight millimeter. Okay, now those screws are out. Looks like a big thing in the way now are these two on um, both sides. So to get these up, it doesn't look like you have enough room to just pull up on this. Cause if you look over here on the side, if I try to pull it up, it has a stopping point. You can see right here, there's that piece of metal 
right there, it'll come up and it'll hit the bottom of this and it will just give you a tiny bit. If you bent this, you could do it. So I didn't actually do it that way. I popped these out. It's pretty difficult. I just got my big boy screwdriver in here and just, just got it out. Uh, either way, whichever one you wanna do. Um, I didn't wanna bend anything, so I just took those out like that. I'm gonna put those down here and forget about them later. And now we've got a lot of wobble, especially up here. The whole thing is very loose. So just those, just those two guys down there really hold this machine together quite a lot. So uh, let's see what's next. Okay, so as I pull back on this, you can see all of these wires have tension on them. We don't want that. So everything that's holding them in place, we need to take that out. So we've got these two, this one, and this guy down here, along with this ground wire. This ground wire, we'll just back that one out. The rest of these, they've all got these little squeeze ones, which is sometimes really hard to do. You squeeze them together and then you push them in. I can't get that one. Maybe I can get the small one. Oh God, that one's even harder. I don't have any nails. Oh, that's quite painful. Ugh. But you get the point. You push them through. Bitch. This one is the only weird one. This one is like a sideways one. So when you pop it through, this end goes in and then the other end slides through. You see how there's a notch there so it can't go this way, but it also can't go the other way because that really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because nothing makes sense. You can just disconnect this one straight from here. Uh, probably what I'll do, just push down this little lever or push up on this little lever right there and then we can get this harness out so we can get the power cord just kind of out of the way. Now that I have the power cord out, I just have that set off to the side. Just comes out just like I said. No big deal. Slides out through the hole. Um, I was pulling on this. I was trying to figure out what was causing tension because there's a few things that are still connected in here, but nothing that would cause tension. But we look down here. It's sitting in two little slots on the bottom. So we do need to raise this up so it pops out of place. Let's see if I can do this. Not, nope, not with one hand. I am not the chosen one. Okay, I got that popped out a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. That's why I couldn't do it with one hand. But anyway, now we have so much more room to look back here. The hose, I've got more than enough room over there. I'll figure that out later. But this stuff is the stuff that's in the way. So that guy is this one. We've got a wire harness that's being connected from that one. And it looks like we've got this whole thing connected right here. And this is all being connected probably by this screw. And it's got like a little nice protective drape because all this nasty stuff, just by this one little pin, plastic little retaining thing, just, oh, it's also on there too. Kind of a weird way to protect it, but I guess it works. I should also let you guys know that this one is the small six and a half, and that ground, wherever the hell that one was, that one was an eight. All right, I got that screw out. Those are slid out. It looks like I missed one all the way down here. There's that guy right down here. Gotta get that one, which is the bottom part of the wire harness down there. That guy there just popped out. The one that's all the way down here, I guess it just pushes through to the other side. So the last thing we have connected is the hose, which is this guy. So eh, now that I look back on it, really everything needs to be taken off the back panel. I thought some things could stay on, but everything's gotta be taken off, including this guy. Okay, just like that. We're in. All right, so if you wanna get further into the machine, which I'm pretty sure I need to do, I, there's something wrong with the spinning. It's not going one way. It's only spinning one way, barely, and not spinning. It's like locked up on the other side. So we need to take the rest of this stuff off to get down in here. So you've got this plug right here. That just has got to come out. And we've already disconnected everything else, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna put that right down here. And then this whole thing can, it 
it hinges back. So you have to make sure right down in here, you get the, I've already got this side out. So there's little clips right down in here that go inside these holes. On both sides, you need to make sure those pop out. And then once they're free, you lift this forward and set it down. Now you have access to all this stuff. And if you want, you can also take this off really easily. You just have the clips right here. I've already got this off, but you just lift them up. They pop out all the way around. And then this guy can come fully off. Now you have access in here and you can see on the inside, I've got it spinning one way. Now it's going. So it spins one way, but then when I try to spin it the other way, it locks up. It'll still spin a little bit, but like I was saying with this one, now it's actually, it's catching on something now. But, so if I was to run this, it would either not spin or it wouldn't agitate because it, it needs to go both ways in order to agitate. And for spinning, I'm not sure which way it spins, but if it spins one way, it would work. If it tried to spin the other way, it wouldn't work. So now I've got to go down to the bottom and figure out what is going on. It's probably the clutch or the, it's something down there with the transmission. All right, so I just removed one, two, and three of the bolts that go inside here. Um, I'm hoping that I can just pull this straight out so I can figure out, because something's going on in either here, I'm guessing this is like the clutch, and I'm guessing this whole thing's like the transmission. Something's happening in here to where it's not spinning in a certain direction. Hopefully the motor is still alive because sometimes the motor can burn out because there's something wrong with the transmission. I don't know which one it is, but I'm gonna come in here to see if I can figure out an issue, maybe do a free fix, hopefully. Now, if you want to remove the motor or the transmission, you're gonna have to remove the Basically, it's like a long axle that goes through here. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take out this guy that goes right in here, your little dispenser thing. That just comes pop straight out. And then you're going to have a little dust shield. <laughs> this one has been doing its job very well. You're going to pull this one out. This was a super struggle. Um, I also have an O-ring that popped out. I believe that goes along this edge right here. So I'm going to get that cleaned up before I put it back in. And then you look inside and you've got a bolt and a nut. You're gonna take that nut off so you can feed it all the way through to the back of the engine. Transmission, actually. Alrighty, so just got that bolt out of there. Now this whole thing can be taken out. And you can see that is what I was talking about. That's like the, kind of like the axle. Now that those are off, we've only got two bits left here. We've got this retaining clip. We just have to slide this off so I can just get it with my fingers. I might have to grab some pliers just to get the, oh, oh, there it goes. So we've got this guy and we also have a little plastic housing that goes over it. There we go. And there it is. Now we can push this out through the back or pull it and we're well on our way. Now, I'm way too lazy to take this apart too much because this is a free dumpster find. So I'm not gonna take the motor off and have to deal with that. I'm gonna take it all off as one chunk. So I'm gonna leave this on. This whole thing can be moved up because everything is, um, it's this balancing mechanism, so it can move up, down, left, right, and whatnot. It's supposed to be hanging, but I have it obviously on its side. So this just has to move up, and then it can be pulled straight out. I only have one hand. Okay, almost forgot before I got too far. Um, the wiring's gotta come off. As you can see, this is coming out easily, but these guys are in the way. So I have to pop this thing off of here, which I probably won't be able to do with one hand. And then these, just unplug and remove the wire harness from these guys. That's fun. Yeah, the hoses too. My bad. All right, here it is in all of its glory. Motor, transmission, drive shaft. It's like a car. 
pretty much. Anyway, um, so now that I'm down here, when I turn this, it's turning the motor. And you can see, here it is. It's like everything that is turning needs to be turned and then I go the other way. Wee, free spinning. So this is good. This is the clutch plate right in here. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna put my pliers in here and I'm gonna compress this spring just like that. And then this should come out. Get it up over there. So, I mean, it's got good meat all the way around. It's not even close to hitting those little, uh, little studs on the inside. So it's got meat all the way around. It's a little dirty, probably because of me hacking away over here with all the oils, but uh, yeah, everything in here looks good. Everything's spinning in here. So I'm guessing it's this guy over here. They're drum brakes, bro. They're little tiny drum brakes. I accidentally popped that one out, but I think the brakes are locked up. Okay, so I figured out how the brakes work. So this little thing right here is actually what activates the brakes. So you can see the shoes up in here on both sides. When they push against it, just like a car, they'll stop the machine. So if I turn it right, it'll get it nice and tight. But if I turn it left, it will squeeze them together. You can see it compresses that spring just enough for it to start turning. So then I do that and it can turn freely. So if uh, you want to get in there, I just, <laughs> I just took this whole thing apart and put it back together just so I could figure out how it worked and film any of that. But I'll show you guys if you do need to get in here and fix the brakes because something is not working right. It's this little clip right here. You wanna take that out. So get yourself a flat head and put it right in here. And this little groove right up here. And then that'll put it right up here at the edge and it'll fire, shots fired somewhere, someone will probably die. And once that one's out, then you can take this out and see on the inside, you've got two little notches in here that go into these two notches. All right, now that clip is out, you can see the shape of this dictates whether it's tight or loose. So loose, or tight right now because the, the spring, since it's not a whole lot going on here, but when it turns that counterclockwise, it's gonna push those two wheels. You see the bottom one and the top one. It's gonna push those apart, which means it's gonna compress that spring. It's just basically the opposite since this goes around. So if you do need to take this out, it's pretty easy. I do suggest getting this too loose or else it won't be able to come out that out and then you've got this little uh, e-clip in here pop that out and then I mean it's it's just like cars how it works it's just this one around here and then the other one comes around this way you have this spring that's a tensioner in here and you've got where it's seated on both sides you've got this little it's like a piece of PVC on the middle I'm guessing that's to keep the spring from bending so uh, this is an absolute pain in the butt once you get this clip out to try to get these shoes out. This one's pretty easy, but the bottom one is basically impossible. What I had to do is there's three screws. There's two here and one here. In order to get this whole thing out, um, this whole thing can just pop out. It's no problem. There's no seals or anything. But to get that out and to kind of move it around so uh, this bottom shoe can come out, because. This little piece right here keeps it from doing that. So big pain in the butt, but I think everything is working now. I just got to put it together. And I'm not 100% sure what was going on in here, but I'm thinking that this may have skipped. I don't know what caused it. This may have jumped the little notches. Um, same thing within here. Maybe uh, something possibly would have jumped somewhere to throw this off, but Everything seems to be working fine now. Like this, this spins freely. This, I can get to spin freely now. I just have to turn it 
counterclockwise, and now the whole thing on the inside turns. I can hear all that water on the inside that's still in there. Uh, by the way, you're probably gonna need some towels when working on this. So that's how that is. Now I've got to uh, figure out how to put this back in. Okay, to get this back in, this just needs to be opposite of this spring. So I have this pointed down and I'll have the spring for the clutch pointed up. So the spring's gonna come up here. This is gonna stay down here. So they're not interfering with each other. As far as I know, that's how it's supposed to go. I'm gonna get everything thrown back together and uh, actually start it. I probably should have done that to begin with, but whatevs.